We always look at the immune function. Drugs are never essential to the immune system, but nutrients are. So that's why leaning to extra zinc or extra vitamin C, let's say your diet's great and you're already getting a lot of those things. That's awesome. But if you do get um, exposed to something, having more of those nutrients could help your immune system deal with that stress better, especially things like vitamin C, because there's so much research on those at higher levels being very beneficial. And, and even if you were to get sick, your body's going to blow through those nutrients at a higher level. It's just like, okay, now you're drag racing your car. Well, you're going to go through a lot more gasoline than you would if you were just driving normally, right? So you have to look at how you run in your body. If your body's already sick or you're under immune assault, right? You really got to bump it up even more so you can decrease exposure to the virus. Yeah, that makes sense. So and, and someone who's already stressed too, we know just by looking at organic acids testing, I mean, I would say 95%, maybe your number is a little different. 95% of people that we're testing clinically are showing really low in a lot of nutrients. So amino acids, various nutrients like vitamin C will show up low all the time. So to me, uh, you may say that, oh, this is extra supplementation, but uh, to us, it's kind of just baseline because so many people are deficient. So we're actually implementing those already, even if this weren't going on. 100%. And I see a lot of doctors out there that are throwing a lot of doctors under the bus that are recommending immune nutrients and immune support. But frankly, there's two differences in care. There's differences where we're working with someone in care and we're testing certain nutrients and we're being more specific and creating a longer term plan. But then there's even with patients, a palliative approach where we may upregulate our immune system for a more acute response. Like if, if someone's going to be having more stress or they're going to be flying on an airplane or they're going to be around people that are potentially more sick, that's a difference to the protocol. We're going to be having more of a palliative immune boosting acute approach. This isn't more of a long-term program. It's more of an acute response because your body may be under more stress right now. And it's just trying to increase our terrain and our reserves so we can deal with something more specifically. So a lot of people get very dogmatic and want to nuance this and make it more difficult than it is. And of course, different people need different nutrients, but there's also general approaches that we can use across the board to give ourselves a little bit more of a bump across you know, the, the population without having to see each person as a patient and test everyone. Right, right. I mean, my thought of it is kind of like a road trip. You're not going to start a road trip with a quarter tank of gas. If you know you've got a journey ahead, you don't really know how things are going to end up. Are people close to you going to get affected or not? It's going to be wise to go ahead and fill up the tank with nutrition now. Even if you're someone who has zero concern, zero fear, worst case scenario, you know, something did happen to you. But I think it would be wise to just, it's a prep. It's, it's sort of prepping your body, prepping your immune system prepping the metabolic system, prepping the nervous system. Like last week, we did a show all about that, uh, different herbs that we love and use to help with the nervous system. All of it counts. Also, when you get exposed to an infection, your needs go up. So ideally, you're already nutritionally supported in a way where your vitamin A levels are good, your C levels are good, your D levels are good. So when an infection hits you, it literally bounces off you. It can't even gain a foothold into your body, right? We know the coronavirus uses that ACE2 receptor site and it gains a foothold in. It uses this like filament to drop off the RNA inside the cell. And then it replicates and then you have an immune response. But if we can even prevent that pesky little mosquito from, from dipping its nose into that ACE2 receptor site, then that prevents this whole issue from happening. So it's keeping your immune, it's like kind of like, hey, we're going to replace the locks on our door. We're going to maybe put a ring camera out there. You know, I may put an ADT sign or something to make people feel, you know, hey, we're watching this, this receptor site, this home a little bit better. And it may prevent someone from even accessing the home or the cell. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a great analogy. I love it. 